They said I couldn't swear, but they didn't say I couldn't drink. Sorry, pastors. Hi, my name is Dr. Dane Rogers. I've been told by my father many, many times that I'm hands down his favorite child. <clears throat> that song you just heard was my father's only request for his funeral. Frank Sinatra's I Did It My Way. And let me tell you, L. Brooks Patterson did it his way always. My father was the smartest man I knew. He would always help me with my papers for school. At the end, I would always go, Dad, these are too good. <laughs> he would make me give him a quarter every time I said a double negative. He truly was an English teacher at heart. During my sophomore year in high school, E.F. Hutton gave my father a large advance to become a stockbroker. So all summer long, I took him iced tea and water up to his room. He studied there nonstop. I would ask him, Dad, why are you studying so hard for this? And he said that he has used one side of his brain for so long as a lawyer and English teacher that it's hard for him to learn numbers and equations as a stockbroker. He was so scared of failing this test, he put so much work into it, especially since he already was given a bonus. The test was in New York City, and there was an 80% failure rate. When he found out his results, he got a 98% on the test. I thought that was very, very impressive. My father was the most compassionate man I ever knew. A good friend just recently told me it would take five men to do, do my dad's job and another 100 to fill his passion. My father asked me when I was 13 to come watch one of his closing arguments as a prosecutor for a trial that he was working really hard on and was very close to his heart. It involved an elderly couple from Ferndale that were brutally raped and murdered by a traveling carnival worker that was in town for a local fair. My dad expressed his passion for this case because all he could think about was his own parents being victimized. On the way to the trial, he said he was asking for three things from the jury. First degree premeditated murder, felony murder, aggravated rape and assault. He didn't think he could get all three, but he said if he got one, he'd be satisfied. I sat and watched my dad give his closing arguments with tears rolling down his cheek, pointing at the defendant, raising his voice, shaking his finger at him, and he called him the midway mutant. He had the jury in his hand. It took all about 10 minutes for them to come back with a guilty on all three charges. Moral of the story, don't piss off L. Brooks Patterson. <laughs> <sighs> My father was the most courageous man I knew. <laughs> My father was never afraid to speak his mind. I remember sitting in our kitchen in high school, listening to my father argue with a guy on the phone saying, I don't care. Oakland County is the economic engine that runs this state. We need our fair share of money back to fix our roads. He went on to say, it's not about the Republican Party. And when he hung up the phone, I said, Dad, who are you arguing with? And he said, Governor John Engler is mad at me for standing in a pothole asking where our money is. He would always put the constituents of Oakland County first. Sorry, Governor Eagler, I know you're here. <laughs> My dad also thought he was Dirty Harry. For instance, there was a house being built right next door to ours, and he heard in the middle of the night two men in a house robbing and stealing some propane takes. My mom came running into the room, woke me up. Dane, Dad's out there with a gun. 
people are robbing the house next door. So my mom and I peered through the window. We we're listening. It's summertime. The, the windows were open. We looked out the window and we heard my dad yell, freeze, MFers. <laughs> they told me I couldn't swear. <laughs> and then he fired six shots at this truck that was pulling away, bouncing up and down the road with protein tanks bouncing all over. Thank God my dad was a terrible shot. <laughs> my father was the most courageous man, except for when he had to go to the dentist or get a shot. His twin brother Steve was a dentist. <laughs> and they had a love-hate relationship because of that. Steve would always tell Brooks, find a new dentist. <laughs> my father was the best fighter I knew. Don't ever debate L. Brooks Patterson. He would show up at the debate with a three-ring binder. Three three-ring binders. He'd put them on the table. I went and watched them. They're full of material, just waiting for you to say the wrong thing, and he'd reuse the material to hang his opponent. The beauty of Brooks is that he never had to open up the binder. He knew everything in that binder. He fought cancer so hard, the chemo treatments were starting to take their toll on him. The family, mostly me, begged him to stop. He promised me that he was not going to do anymore. And I said, Dad, just wait a month. Wait six weeks. Heal up a bit before you have your next one. And he said, Dane, you're right. I'm going to wait a bit. The very next day, he went to Carmanos. I even called him on the phone as he went. I said, you're not getting chemo, right? He said, nope. I'm just going to go get my labs checked. While he was there, he begged the doctors to give him chemo one more time. While the doctors were out of the room getting the chemo medicine, his driver turned to him and said, Brooks, you promised your family, you promised Dane, you weren't going to do chemo anymore. We barely got you back from the last one. And he turned to the driver and said, I have to fight for the county employees and the county. They're counting on me. My father had a huge weight on his shoulders to stay alive for not just his family and grandkids, but for his love of the county and its loyal employees. We never got him back from that last chemo. Throughout my father's chemo treatments, he always had the best attitude and the best sense of humor. He would switch between either acting like he was dead, that was cool, Or he would say, ow, 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 if you moved him, and then he'd laugh at you. <laughs> but afterwards, he would just look at back, back at you and smile. We would ask him what year it was, and he'd always get it wrong. But there was one thing he always knew. We asked him who the president was, and he always said, Trump, and he's kicking ass. My father was the most loyal friend I knew. Dad had a great friend named Ron Dobson. They did everything together. Unfortunately, Ron and his family were in a plane crash. He and his two children passed away, leaving his wife, Janet, broken and beat up, but a survivor of that crash. He started the Dobson Open Golf Outing to give scholarships to students at Clarkson High School. After a period of time, he realized there was a greater need in the state of Michigan to grant wishes of, to terminally ill children. That is now called the Rainbow Connection. As we all know, the Rainbow Connection was very, very close to his, to his heart. When we moved on to Lake Oakland, we used to have to sit around and watch TV in the dark. He would yell at us if anyone would turn any lights on, on a Tuesday night. If a light was on, a boat would stop by. And another boat would stop by. And another boat would stop by. And my dad would always offer him a beer. And then there would be a party at Elbrooks Parsons' house on a Tuesday night till one in the morning. <laughs> All because he could never say no to his friends. My father was the best father and grandfather that I knew. He supported his kids at whatever we wanted to do. He was always about education, 
getting a degree, using your degree. He supported me when I wanted to go to chiropractic college, even though he didn't know what it was. He was always there for me. He supported Brooksy and his dreams of moving out to Colorado and build snowboards. He supported his son's memory by naming the Rochester's Half Marathon the Brooksy Way. He supported Mary when she wanted to become a teacher, a mother of four beautiful children, and an entrepreneur. He was always so proud of her. He supported Sean on over the 300 plus jobs she's had <laughs> and lost, some of them even on the very same day. I mean, how do you screw up drying cars with a rag at one of your best friend's car wash? Oh, I remember. You wore a bracelet that scratched the cars as they were being dried after repeatedly told not to. Man, did our dad love us. My father was the funniest man I knew. You all know that. You all have your own stories. Whether he was crawling around underneath the tables at Deer Lake Racquet Club doing knee high checks for all the ladies in the room, <laughs> to balancing a spoon on his nose at even some of the most classiest places in the United States, or hiding birthday cakes at every single birthday party he attended. It only took one of Mary's kids' beautiful cakes to be ruined to put a stop to that. My father visited me freshman year at college. It was parents' weekend. I lived in a two-bedroom dorm that had a shared bathroom down the middle of the rooms. My father was never afraid to sneak off to the bathroom to do his business anywhere. He snuck into the bathroom in my room. He was in there for like a good 20 minutes. The doors of the bathrooms of these dorms didn't quite come to the ground. There's a two-inch gap. Oh, sorry. The odor started smelling so badly <laughs> that our family had to walk out in the hallway. And when we got in the hallway, the other dorm's visiting family was already in the hallway <laughs> because of the smell. <sighs> the visiting family of the adjoining room were standing there, and we didn't say a word. <laughs> My father, thinking he was funny, comes running out of the bathroom with a long strand of toilet paper, purposely trailing behind him, spraying spray, and he goes, who was that? <laughs> and then he turned and looked and saw the whole family standing there with their mouths wide open. It was a never a dull moment with our father. My dad's father was old school, and he didn't kiss much. Because of that, my dad loved to kiss. And he's told me the story over and over. The problem with it is that my father was a lip licker right before he kissed you. So you inevitably always got a nice wet one from L. Brooks Patterson. What I would do for another one of those kisses. The day before my father died, he wasn't saying much at this point. He would give one word answers if any, and he was not opening his eyes. My brother-in-law, Gary, had a brilliant idea. He poured three cc in waters. He gave one to Forrest Milzo, my dad's good friend, one to himself, and one for me for a toast. And I said, let's go in and do a toast over dad. After our toast, he took a sip, and I said, screw that. He's joining us. So I dipped my finger in the CC, and I rubbed it on his lips. I, my dad started licking his lips, never opening his eyes. I said, Dad, you know what that is? That's CC. You like that? He shook his head. I looked over to my left, and there's a big syringe that we've been using, and we give him broth. And at this point, we're only allowed to give him little one milliliters. It was a 12 milliliter syringe. I stuck it in my drink, sucked up 12 milliliters. Gary was about to kill me. And I tapped him on the lips. I said, Dad, open up. Open up. And he opened up, and I squirted all of the CC and water in his mouth. I said, Dad, swish it around. 
the swish around. I said, do you know what that is? That's CC water. Do you like that? I said, Dad, swallow that. He swallowed it down. And he sat there. And he went, ah. It's like I died and went to heaven. <laughs> he never opened his eyes when he made that statement. And those were the last words that my father ever spoke. Here's to you, Dad. 